there, happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together here. Uh, so tonight we are back on the Splendid Sampler 2. We're working on the Little Things uh, quilt block here. We're doing some raw edge applique. We are about halfway done getting those applique pieces on. It's this adorable little blue mug here. I would love to actually own this mug. I would totally drink coffee out of it every morning. Uh, anyway, so we are going to finish... Uh, sticking the applique pieces on. We have a, two more of those little heart tulips. Uh, I suppose they're tulips to go. And then all of the little leaves. So I'm hoping we can cruise through all that. I would like to actually start stitching them today too. So uh, we're fusing these on, but then we're going to also stitch around the edge just to make sure everything is secure. Uh, so we will only be working on this for today and then the rest of the week we're going to play around with some other things. We are going to get out my new darning uh, weaving tool. I'll show you guys that uh, once we're uh, towards the end of today here yet and we will get that out and uh, do some darning tomorrow with it. I haven't used it yet so it'll be kind of fun to give it a try. So all right, let's get going. Hello, hello everyone. Okay, here we are. So I got my tray of fabric here so this is all the fabric that we've been using um throughout this Ooh, and this is a good color i should grab this uh i'm trying to i'm going to be using tan colors for all the leaves so we'll have to be getting a few of those soon but we've already picked the other two colors for the little hearts and uh let's see let's just start up right away um i have yesterday's video is over on youtube if you did want to see more of this process but right now I'm in like let's crank this puppy out mode so here's heart number four and that was gonna be with this guy here eh, he can use a little bit of a press I think so hope everyone is having a lovely lovely day all right so I'm gonna be taking the sticky back off of this this is that steam a seam to uh, the light version which theoretically means you could hand stitch through it, but I'm a little skeptical on that. That still sounds like a hard job. Ugh, I gotta learn to draw on the white side, not the side with the the um, yellow lines on, because it's hard to, it wants to stick to the white side, not the yellow line side. Anyway, it's being, it's being a little annoying, maybe because it's just super dry out too. Ooh, you guys, we are having the below zeros here. Um, so that's been fun. All right, so this has a few little kind of flowers on. I could actually kind of fussy place this. So why don't I, I'm going to place this heart so one of those flowers is like right in the middle. Like this little cute guy can go right in the middle. And the nice thing with this uh, steam seam too is that you can like keep placing it again. Uh, but I think I got it right in the middle that first time. So this this little flower should be, I can hold it up to the light too, should be kind of right in the center. Really fun. All right, so let's fuse this. So I'm just going to hold that on there for a few seconds. I don't even think it says how many seconds to hold it on in the instructions, which seems kind of weird to me. Um, but I don't know, seven or eight sections. Sylvia, or second, Sylvia says, burr, yes, it has been so chilly. All right, so now I'm going to cut uh, really nicely on that line. Because this is going to be the final edge. I'm using my nice scissors. I am hoping that we get to sewing today. That'd be awesome. But if we literally just got all these stuck down and fused, that's great i won't have to save any little pieces of fabric or anything the next time we work on this we'll get to do the embroidery and uh, all the stems are embroidered and the final sewing around the edges full concentration mode can't cut in the chat at the same time all right so again you don't want to save the pieces of fabric with that fusible on because that could wreck your iron or just make you have to clean it so i'm gonna just this fabric is so cute and i use it all the time and i bet you i will use a tiny piece like that so i'm gonna just keep that piece and then the rest can go 
All right, and uh, now I'm gonna just draw that X in the middle of this guy because I don't want to be like trying to pick the paper off on the edges. That will uh, that will theoretically make the edges a little raw too quickly. I want to keep these nicely cut edges. Okay, so let's stick it on. Yep, I'm gonna straight stitch these on. So right now they're just, right now uh, I've, I fused the cup. So the cup has been like ironed on. Um, so that should be pretty good. I bet you I'd pick it off if I really wanted to, but these hearts are only stuck down. So that's the beauty of this uh, steam seam too, is that it has that sticky side. So I can move things around and they're not gonna fall off uh, compared to normal uh, fusible. Um, this guy's fused, so we'll fuse all those, but yes, I will still do the straight stitch. Just, you know, my normal sewing machine stitch, I'll, I'll go around all the little edges for that. So that'll, that'll take some time. Okay, last heart, and then I wanted to do more of the tans for all the leaves. Oof, and we got a ton of them. We got six leaves. So that'll, that'll take us a little bit of time, actually. Maybe we'll try and pick our fabrics and fuse them all at once. So maybe those ones will try and speed up the process. I've been kind of just going one thing at a time with this, which maybe isn't the best use of our time, or like isn't the speediest way of doing it, but it was nice when we, it was nice yesterday when I wasn't sure of all the things I was gonna use yet or anything like that. I wonder if I can get this right on here. Ha <laughs> ha, perfect. Look, I'm using this tiny little section right here. I don't even think I need to iron it right away. Could use little tweezers for this almost. Perfect little spot. That's why we save all these little scrappies for this project is for tiny fusible pieces like this. Okay. Gotta say, still 100% in love with my cordless iron here. Best freaking tool. Cordless iron! Wool pressing mat and my uh, fancy Kai scissors. Dang, that, that trio is great. Are you using the fusible webbing? Yes, uh, Washi, I am using, uh, let's get it out again. Oh, I think I put it away. I am using the uh, steam -a seam the light. So <laughs> it's got a crazy name and you really do have to type it in just right. So it's the light steam -a seam 2. <laughs> big crazy name but it is it's a double stick uh fusible web so the, there's fusible on both sides and both sides are actually sticky too so you can uh, um, cut it out and stick it in place wherever you want and uh that just works so well for just you know like i said i can just kind of shimmy this wherever and my pieces are going to stick without them actually being fused this guy i did fuse just because i don't know felt like it last night before moving on uh, but these guys aren't technically fused yet. But I'll probably do that after cutting or after sticking this heart on. We'll do a final fuse of those hearts. And then we'll move on to all those little leaves. This is fun. I'm, I'm glad I did different colors for each of these. So this is from the Splendid Sampler 2 book. I'll show you guys that again. Kind of just brushed over that today. So we are going through a hundred different quilt blocks which is crazy. We had done this before though. We did the first Splendid Sampler book and I had one, I, I got to be one of the designers of the blocks for that one. And now we're taking on the second one and we've really been working on this project for years. So here's here's the block from the book. Um, it's do by Don Heese. I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's called Little Things. And there's the example one. Again, you guys, this is the Splendid Sampler 2 uh, book. And yeah, we've been working our way through. I should show you. Um, so we're doing the quilt as we go process as well, which has been kind of fun. So we've been sewing uh, like each of the blocks uh, and quilting it at the same time. So these are all actually quilted already. <laughs> Remember these ones, you guys? It's been forever. So we've been working on this project for probably years. And it, so some of these we, <laughs> <laughs> did ages and ages ago uh, but it was so fun so we'll we'll get on to the the quilting again for this soon because uh, I've been putting them in groups of four before quilting them and uh, we have seven right here so after this one it'll be eight 
And then we can do two uh, quilted ones. So that'll be kind of fun. Maybe get us in the mood for some quilting again, because I got all those other unfinished quilts that need to happen yet, too. And I think after this block is done, we will be down to 28 left, which is still a big number. <laughs> Sylvia says, how brave to start 100 block. Yeah, man, I don't know. It just is, I, I learned so much from the first one just by doing, it's got all sorts of different techniques. And so, and you know, like I could have done this, just this applique using various applique techniques. So there's niches of niches uh, within it. And so it was just such a big learning tool for me, the first splendid sampler, and especially doing it with you guys. I'm gonna fuse these down, doing the whole thing with you guys here because you guys all know stuff <laughs> and tell me what to do and that's been so helpful uh with me learning as well and uh so we picked up the second one too but man this baby's taking forever it feels like maybe it's just because we have so many projects on our mind and that was actually so nice about uh towards the end of the year and the first half of january just us just finishing up some old projects has been really really nice all right, those guys are fused. It's looking so cute so far. Uh, and my quilt is very blonde. We're, we've been calling it the blonde quilt because it's all kind of the tans, uh, the tans and the yellows. Um, this was, I, I always like challenging myself in some way with every project I work on. And the challenge for this was, can I do a quilt with that's not like super bright saturated colors? even though we did pop some in. So every like five blocks or so, I kind of cheated on this one, but every five blocks or so, I put in a little bit more color. I have, and we picked all these fabrics out beforehand. All right, let's pick some tans for these and I'm gonna do it all at once. Um, ooh, I'm gonna use like these baby tiny pieces here if I can. Oh, I suppose I, I suppose I don't have to be so picky. Let, let's let it be, be a surprise. So for the flowers, I kind of laid them out where I wanted the colors. Oh, and look, that, that little uh, fussy cut one uh, turned out kind of cute. He's right in the middle of that little flower. Um, so I'm gonna let th this one be a surprise. I'm gonna just lay out, um, I need six kind of tan fabrics. I'm gonna just lay them all out here, stick some, stick my leaves on them, and then just see where they end up on the piece. That'll be kind of fun, way different than yesterday. All right, so I got four here. These all need to be pressed. Okay, so the blonde, or like doing something with like pale colors where I always choose white for the background if there's a clear background. Um, Cause that's a thing I hadn't done. And this is, this is all quilt as you go. Oh, oh, I picked that one already. Uh, this is, it's all quilt as you go, which is what I showed where I'm, I'm actually quilting the pieces, like I'm grouping them and then then quilting them in little chunks. One, two, three, four, five. One more. I'd like to use this little star one, but... Oh, it is connected to a larger piece. Okay, good. So those two things, the light colors, the pale colors, and the quilt as you go, I hadn't done before. So I'm learning learning how to do those. Yep, Sylvia, this is a pop of color, this one for sure, with the with the blue in. Just, you gotta have a cute little blue teacup. I think the the teacup that we embroidered, like there was another design that had an embroidered teacup. Lots of teacups in the quilting world, I think. <laughs> nice classic design. Uh, but I think I basically <laughs> did blue for that one too. Ah, oh, the people are calling for a Splendid Sampler 3. Wouldn't that be fun? Man, I don't know you guys if I would do a Splendid Sampler 3 though. Uh, maybe I don't know. We're we're fitting it in, um, fitting it into our stream still. All right. So I have all these face down. I'm gonna just kind of see what fits. Maybe I'll lay them all out. Oh yeah, that works. Good. Uh, he can go there. Ooh, I want some flowers in. Ooh, there'll be a flower right in the middle. Perfect. Uh, so I have to take the backs off of these yet, but I thought I'd just kind of get them on here. Do you fit here? Ooh, yes, just barely. Okay, good. And, ooh, right there. Wait a sec. Uh-oh. 
Did I lose one? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Oh, goodness. A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C. We're missing letter D here, people. Ah, but just on the floor or something. Stuck to me. <laughs> Oh, this is just like exactly what I didn't want to have happen, which always happens with these tiny pieces. Well, I think I might have to draw another um, guy here. Grr. Well, that's fine. I have, I can do that. That's fine. Maybe I never even traced that one. That could be two. All right, I'm going to get, oh, and we got perfect little scraps. Fine jerk butts. I'm going to trace it just right from the fabric here. Uh, pencil. What did I say? D? Yes. Oh, that's a big one up here, too. D. <laughs> ah, that's annoying. All right. I'm gonna get my paper scissors. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm like, I don't really need my paper scissors because I've been cutting through this with my nice scissors. That little D is hiding somewhere in this house, I bet. That little leaf. It's probably stuck to the bottom of a sock. Look under the sewing machine, that's the first place I looked. They're all kind of hiding in this corner here. All right, fine. We did it. Here we go. Uh, all right, let's take off the backing, stick them on, press them, and do you do it on backwards? Yes, so Amy, we're doing it on the back side. Oh, did I do it backwards? Oh, no, I didn't. You're right. I traced it the right side, but it's practically equal on both sides, so I'm not going to worry about it, but you're totally right. I should have I should have done it in reverse. <laughs> you're 100% right. I should have done that leaf in reverse, but luckily this leaf, you know, could work either way, I think. Oh, you're trying to teach yourself how to, to quilt. Washi, that is awesome. So this is this has been a big learning process for me uh, doing all this quilting, but <clears throat> I feel like now I can... Uh, now I feel... Like, I can hold my own, that's for sure. We've learned a lot of techniques, and we've we've done a lot of sewing here over the years. Okay. The this, this sticky's coming off of this, so I don't want to move too much. Oh, I hope that's okay. it's coming off of my fingernails too yeah I, I totally didn't do that one backwards like I should have but it will be fine with the uh, because it's this particular thing if I did that with like the the um, handle or something we'd be in trouble but this little leaf I think is fine Ugh, this is like the most annoying part Taking off all these papers, I think. Okay. We'll get there, though. Instead of doing it one by one, we're just cruising through. So we'll fuse these, and then we'll trim them all out. Get them all on. I think we'll have time to sew yet. This is feeling like it's going fast. Although now that we're doing all these pieces all at once, all the little parts are going to take forever. Or did I? Yeah, I got this little flower in here. Cute. The other thing that could have happened is I might have thrown away the letter D uh, last night because I did throw away my little pile of cast-offs uh, so they wouldn't get mixed up with everything. 
man, I might have thrown away, might have thrown away the letter D. Come on. I have it, it's just being dumb. There we go. Oh shoot, and this sticky stuff's going everywhere too. A little nervous for my iron, but my iron actually needs to be cleaned soon. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna have to spend a day cleaning up everything, I think. Okay, well, that will be good enough for us to get started, I think. Alright, I'm gonna just snip all these so I can separate them from the big bulk first and I can get rid of... My table's exploding here again. Get rid of all the excess here. Even these little pieces I'm saving. I do actually like sewing all these pieces together uh, when I'm done. I don't know what I'll do with them. This little piece I won't save. There, all right, now let's trim these for real. Full concentration mode. <laughs> Ooh, and we didn't we didn't see where these go yet, so let's see what it ends up looking like. So, so this is letter B. He's gonna go there. Oh, look at the little purple guy on there. That that looks great. That's a good spot for that decorative one too. So I haven't taken off the backs yet. I'll do that after I kind of get all this cut out. Tonight we're doing one step at a time. Versus one piece at a time. Okay, letter A. That's pretty. We use that fabric a lot. I guess we've used all these fabrics a lot in this quilt. Tiny, tiny little pieces. Oh, I'm glad we didn't needle applique all this, though. This would have taken a while. Ooh, and this has a little star on. That's cute. Okay, letter E. Aw, this is sweet. <laughs> These pictorial ones always end up so cute. Like, I initially go for the, like, really kind of graphic uh, squares and triangles and rectangles and just, like, those really, I don't know, I just like those. But whenever I am actually making these ones that are actual in a picture of something, I just fall in love with them. Okay, F. Oh, that one's cute too. So I will clean all this up uh, for tomorrow and we'll work on that darning. So I have two different things I could darn and I'll show you those two tonight, I think. We can decide because darning does take a little bit of time. I would actually like to start tatting that tatting shuttle design too. I know um, that's been mentioned here and I, I understand the first part now, the split ring. So we'll learn a new tatting thing, the, the split ring, which um, I've been shown on the ticky pages. Shown how to do. Oh yeah, this one was the one in reverse. But I think it'll still work just fine. All right, that is looking 
all sorts of adorable. So let's get these fused down. So I'll stick them on first and then I'll bring them to the mat and fuse it. So we gotta do our little X through the back. They're so staticky. Get that point matched up. There we go. That's nice. Letter B. right on my line here. Aww. <laughs> I keep, I keep awing over, <laughs> over how sweet it is. It's just so cute. Another nice thing about um, this particular project, both splendid samplers, is that uh, it's a lot of different designers. So uh, I feel like I'm learning uh, the ways different people do uh, different techniques and stuff along the way to some extent, or how, how other people would like divide up how to do the triangles and rectangles and all that. And uh, that's just seeing how other people do those things has been helpful. <laughs> These guys are everywhere. Oops. So I'd like to sew these on before I do any of the embroidery. Dang, we'll for sure get a big start on the on the sewing tonight, though. I wasn't even sure we'd get to the sewing, but we're practically ready for that, and it's not even nine yet, you guys. So this is going nice and speedy. I can't get them off my fingers. I'm kind of scooting them down here a little bit so they're on the um, on the embroidery lines. Eh, that one got angled a little funny, but well, I can lift it up though. Let's just do that. This one got a little fussle on. All right, looking good. So let's give this like a final little fuse and uh, then we will get it on the sewing machine. Yay, this is looking just adorable and about 8,000% faster than if we would have tried to needle turn applique this. So we're going for speed lately on these, on these blocks. Okay, so let's hop over and sew this. A little sewing machine, haven't seen him in a while. All right, I'm gonna scoot you guys back a little bit. Oh. Maybe you guys can actually see better this way. Hold on. There we are. OK, let's give this a go. So I am going to, let's see, attempt to, first of all, my thread is a little unwound here. OK, I think we're fine. Been a while on the machine here. Let's see, what's the path we can take to get this all sewn at once? Kind of tempted to go around the handle and then coming back up this way. 
and then going around. Why don't we why don't we do that? <laughs> Trying to take the shortest or the path with the least amount of Woo, jeez. Pick up. My light came off there. It scared me. Hold on. Tighten that up. Okay. I've been lifting this up and down off of the ground. This poor guy lives on the ground when I'm not using him. I have a little cart behind me. I wonder if I should just stick him on the cart. So I'm not going to do any back stitches uh, because I can pull these threads to the back and tie them off. And then you won't see where I started and stopped really. So I'm just on the inside of this and we're going to take our time going around the edge here. So if you have like decorative stitches on your machine, this is totally a great place to play around with them. Um, I know like a blanket stitch is pretty common. I don't have any machine here that can do, do that. I just I have all these vintage machines. At least this one could go in reverse. My uh, husband's great grandma's machine, that one only goes forward in a straight stitch. And that was the only working machine we had for a while. I don't know if you guys remember that, but dang, um, we had to turn the whole thing around to do our little back tack. Although I think instead of a back tack, like where you go like forward and reverse and then forward again, just to kind of lock in the stitches, I've heard that you can just do a bunch of stitches um, without any uh, stitch length. So like a like bunch of stitches right in the same spot and it'll have the same sort of effect as a back tack, but I don't, I don't know. Let me know if any of you guys do that. So, all right, I'm going to come up on the actual um, teapot now or the, uh, ooh, maybe I should go around the tea. Then I could come back down here and then get the other side of this. Heh. And then I'd be right at the, at, oh yeah. Oh, this is going to be good. So I am now going to turn. We're going to do down and around this and come back to the top. And then we'll get the inside of the handle. And then we'll be right at where the line going down the center is. I think one more. Ooh. I should maybe back that one up. We're going to go backwards a hair. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, I think we got this path where I don't have to pick up at all. Ugh, that's, I need to go, I'm just going to lower my stitch length and go like a teensy bit forward. There we go. That's what I want. Wanted to get closer to the base there, but now I got to up my stitch length again. Not sure what the best stitch length for this applique is. I've just been going at whatever my machine's at and uh, it's been looking cute. Doing it this way, I think. All right. Now I'm gonna come up around the edge. Lots of starting and stopping on this though with all the curves. Maybe I needed, no, we're fine. Your fancy electronic, Amy says my fancy electronic machine. Oh, does that, oh cool. The uh, um, blanket stitch, my long arm also does almost, oh, no stitch length. Oh, oh, your fancy electronic machine does the um, stitching in one spot. Oh, interesting. And your, lar your long arm also does almost no stitch length. Oh, like four. Four or five in the space of a normal stitch. Oh, interesting. So maybe I'll try that um, instead of like reversing at some point. Marsha says I do that to tack in place when actually um, quilting the layers. Oh, never thought to do it in piecing, but you rarely backtrack in piecing anyway. Yeah, I, I um, if I'm chain piecing, then I don't usually back tack, but I don't know. You know what? I, I should try that when we paper piece, because in that foundation paper piecing, I always like back tacking. I know not everyone does that. I think it went one too far, but we're gonna go with it. So I'm, I'm using this kind of, 
I've been slowly using up whatever thread I have, so this is that kind of orangey neutral. I, I ran out of all my neutral neutrals. Actually, I think I have a little bit, oh no, I guess not. I thought I had a little bit um, on my other machine, but I don't see it. Uh, so the next closest neutral thread was this kind of orange, which actually works perfect for this quilt because there's a lot of orange in this quilt. Actually, we wanted to use that for um, the granny square quilt yet, you guys. We got to finish that one. So we'll have to... I need to make a good schedule for our quilt finishing because I, I do want to quilt them all. I'll probably quilt them all at my parents' house because they have space to lay it out and and all that. Um, but I need to get figured out when I want to do that. All right, now I'm going to come down to here, hop on to the inside track here. Ooh, I'm, this part I'm, I'm going to have to like go down here and then back check again and then go around here. Or let's see, maybe we do a figure eight. So maybe I go all the way down here. Come all the way down here, go around and then come back down and maybe come back up and then go, we're gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making this way more complicated than it needs to be. I just like the idea of getting this all at once. So, all right, so I've made it down here and I'm gonna slowly kind of backtrack my way back up. See if I can do that. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna go around this center line here. those stitches oh yeah you can't really tell that I too badly that I went over oh this is like the exact same color as like this gold these gold little dots through this this gold thread so that that turned out fun all right and now I'm gonna go back down just a teeny bit to the handle did I make it all the way yeah and now we'll come back up on the inside part of the handle and we're gonna end up like almost at the start point, which is cool. So then we'll take this off the machine and I'll probably tie off the little ends to the back and then we can go get going on um, some of these other little bits. Thought I'd do this big piece first though. Sometimes nice to get these big chunks done. It feels like you've done a lot then. And this is like straighter, like straightaways and stuff. So I feel like it's good practice before getting to all the curvy ones. All right, and that's that. Let's come back up. Cute, so he's attached. All right, let's snip that. And uh, now I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna, whew, hold on, making a mess down here. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of shorten these a hair. I want them long enough that I can still tie them. So that one seems pretty short. So, all right, now I'm gonna flip to the back. Oh gosh, look how dirty that is. I'm gonna just uh, tug on these a hair and that should help bring the stitch from the front forward like it is here. There we go, we'll do that one first. And I'm gonna just tie this into a little knot. This is, this is we're being fancy here, but this is, so um, there's not gonna be lots of extra stitches on the front from doing a little back tacking. All right, so that, that guy's done. 
that was picking up some fuzz. I wonder if that I wonder if it's time to clean the machine again. I thought we just did that though. Ooh, where is this front piece? Got him. Okay. That cup is completely done right now so there we go all stitched on um, it has just like a really subtle little border which i think is nice uh so all right i'm kind of just tempted to go clockwise around here i think i will take it off each time so i have the little so the stitches are long enough for me to tie to the back like i did here but I don't think I'm going to tie them all off right away. I think I'm going to stay uh, in the machine and just kind of get them as much sewn as I can. All right. Got a game plan. Let's do it. Trying to hold both my threads so they don't get sucked up into the machine. But I'm not sure this machine does that. Uh, but that 70s Kenmore, if I don't hold down the bobbin thread, it'll just swoop right back into the machine. So I think I'm just paranoid. I can definitely tell that the uh, steam seam stabilizer, or not stabilizer, the uh, fusible, it is getting gunking up my needle here. I can see it on the needle a bit. Um, so we'll probably change needles when we're done. I think I need to go one more. Yeah. This is going to add a cute little edge to all these. Ooh, turn. Okay, so I'm going to take it off the machine just so I can get a little bit of thread. It's going to be annoying tying all these in, but we'll do it. Okay, let's get this heart. Help it out, lifting up the foot. Sorry, my other hand's here. It's back here, lifting, lifting the foot up and down, just to help me turn. So I gotta make sure my needle's down. And this isn't a fancy machine that has that auto needle down feature, which is so cool. So I gotta hit my pedal oop, just right. And that works so much better now. Uh, we put those little, remember we put those little silicone bands, little mini rubber bands on the um, motor pulley wheel. Dang, ever since we've done that, this has been running slick. It used to like spin on the wheel for a little bit before it'd like be able to grab it. So that was a lot harder, but now it just grabs right away. That was a great, um, tip that someone gave. That's why I do this. I get all the fancy tips. Alright, next heart. 
perfect. These strings are really gonna get in my way and I'm uh, probably sewing over them a little bit here and there. So I don't know, if this gets super annoying, we'll tie all these off. Um, before getting much further. Oh, it's so cute though, stitched down. It does, it magically makes it look like 100% more finished, just with the little edge, which is just so cute. So I know this is like the only uh, the stitch that I have on, on this machine for this applique, but it's so cute, just a tiny little straight stitch around. I don't think you have to think that it has to be all super fancy stitches or anything to do raw edge applique. Like it really does look sweet with just a, this little straight stitch. I think I might have just said back stitch. So <laughs> this is very similar looking to an embroidery back stitch. So a lot of times I end up just saying back stitch instead of a straight stitch. So if I do say back stitch, I, I mean the same thing. All right, I think the rest I can get without lifting up. Great. You know what, I think let's, let's take a break and bring these to the back. All these little stringies need to go. Clean up as we go, I guess. All right, I'm gonna bring these two front strands forward. I'm just going to tie these all together in one knot. Ooh, you guys, it's the last week to get the penguin embroidery. Oh, no, it's not. I'm, I'm keeping the, the things in the, the shop now. That's right. They're not going away. Uh, but it's the uh, last time you can get it for the discounted price and with the needle minder. So I still do have some of those penguin and fish needle minders left. Um, I know I did take them off as individual products just to make sure we had enough for the, for the kits, but um, we still have enough for the kits right now if you were wanting one, but we will put them up in the shop, um, all the leftovers in February. Those are fun. I definitely want to make more needle minders. So I got to get designing again for that. You guys had some really fun suggestions the other day. So a couple and then we'll tie. I just was getting too busy with threads. But I didn't want to do this every single time. So I think this worked out great. Boop. Okay, so we're all cleaned up again. So here's the first, the first three. It really is looking sweet. Ugh, love it. All right. That color is pretty, That just that, that gold-orange thread. Okay. Next little leaf. I have really a lot of applique pieces on this. All right, isn't there? Oh, gotta get this kind of, turn the wheel, get a running start, I guess. Didn't want to go right away. I am 
excited to get quilting again, though. That'll be fun. Next up, another little leaf. <laughs> I feel like I went into full concentration mode again. I really like that we did all scraps for this. I mean, like, I guess all my all my fabrics are scraps at this point. But like that, we did different different bits for each each one of these. I think it just is a nice representation of the quilt, really, right now. All of my favorite little pieces of fabric. Speaking of quilting, I gotta get my um, sewing machine into the shop one of these days. I think I can still do free motion on though, just fine. Ooh, I did order another one of those, what are those called? Those easy slide mats. Um, so we'll be doing uh, free motion quilting. Well, I will uh, for, the ABC stitch along quilt. I'll have measurements and stuff uh, in a little bit for what I'm doing for that quilt as well. If you guys wanted to do something similar to me, but that ABC quilt will be starting um, on uh, next Monday. So the, the 31st, this coming Monday, I suppose. So we'll be doing all the embroidery though. Uh, not all embroidery first, because we'll be doing quilt as you go, but we'll be starting out with some embroidery, and we'll get to quilting um, as we kind of finish it, but I'm thinking probably not till March. We'll get ahead on some embroideries and then do some quilting on them. So that'll be the first and second week of each month. And starting on the... 31st because it's pretty much a full week uh, the first week of, of February except for that Monday so that's why that's why we're starting on the 31st instead of the first all right I think I'll bring all these threads to the back and then uh, we just have four more little pieces to go you guys we are so much further on this than I thought we were gonna be so all right so I think yeah we'll just get these these pieces to the back and tie them off and then I think we'll probably be done for the night uh, and probably done for the month so we'll actually pick this up uh, next month uh, the last week of the month so for the first two days of the last week of the month I want to work on the splendid sampler too because we need to keep moving forward on this project um so we'll do that but I also want the fourth week of the month for us to be doing some other like small projects and trying out some other things and things we've been wanting to try and stuff. So, so this time we will be uh, doing the darning. So I'll, uh, once we're done tying these off, I'll show you before we leave tonight, I'll show you the darning tools that I want to use tomorrow and what we might be darning. And I'd like to start tatting again uh, this week. So maybe darning Wednesday, Thursday, and this little piece down here. 
and then maybe Friday we'll do a little bit of tatting. That'd be nice. All right, that leaf is done. We got, oh, I thought we had four. Oh, we do. Here's one. I thought I did four little dudes. And this again is just giving us a clean front by pulling these to the back versus a bunch of back tacking and just gotten into the habit of doing this on these. to the back easily though. Okay, last one for the night. So this is great. So these are fused. Uh, it'll be very clear uh, when we start up again what the next step is. I don't think I need to write write it down anywhere. Um, there'll be very obviously four that aren't sewn yet. And uh, then with big blue lines on it for the embroidery. And then this guy will be done. So I expect this will go pretty quick next month. Then we can start the next one too. Yay! Ooh, or we could prep them for quilting. That was the other thing we were going to do. Maybe quilt these guys right away. Okay, there we are for the evening. I think it looks adorable with those little stitches on. So these this four, uh, these four here, that last clump we got to do. Uh, but it's looking good. Oh, JW says looking, oh, looking forward to tatting. Me too. So we're going to be doing that uh, tatting pattern that looks like a tatted shuttle. Uh, just because we're, we're going to be able to do that split ring um, that I haven't done yet, but I think that'll be kind of interesting. And I think the rest seem pretty straightforward, so I'll, I'm looking forward to that too. Okay, well, this is this, and then let's, uh, I wanted to show you um, my darning tools I put in here, because darning you do in autumn to prep for winter, so that's why I got it in that little cute zipper pouch. Let me grab um, grab these guys yet. Yeah. Okay. So this is that <laughs> this is that uh, pattern that I want to try that looks like a little shuttle. I just think it's super decorative. I think it'd be fun. And this right here is a split ring. Um, but I think the rest is the rest. I think I can figure out. <laughs> it took me a little while for that split ring though. I've had the, I watched, I had the split ring identified. Uh, someone did a video of how to do it on TikTok for me, which was freaking fabulous. And then I watched a YouTube video on how to do it too. And I think I got it down in my head, uh, but I have not actually done it yet. So here's some of these darning tools. So I have three different sizes. So I got a, a big one. So it's just kind of neat. So you actually stretch your fabric around this disc and then rubber band it down. That's why it has this little uh, crevice. <laughs> That's not the right word, but close enough in here. Uh, so a rubber band will go around that. And then this guy will just set up here. And then a rubber band will hook around here and then go around to this side. So everything is going to be like in place. And then right here, we weave our threads back and forth over the hole and uh, you stick the needle in through here uh, and uh, some of the stitches will be lifted a little bit because of how these are angled. And then uh, when we want to weave, we want to weave 
uh, like we want to go for the first row, we want to go like over, under, over, and then the second row we want to go under, over, under. So it's so. Oh, the ridge, <laughs> Marsha. That is totally the right word that I was thinking of. The ridge. Oh man. Uh, but what's neat is uh, you can flip all these. So watch this. This is cool. You flip all these guys, and it's like a little like wave motion, and that turns all of these hooks the other direction. And then we can just stick the needle needle in there right away, and um, that's what's gonna get uh, the like crisscross the so weave pattern easy for us. Otherwise, we gotta stick the needle in and go up and down ourselves. This is theoretically supposed to make that whole process faster. So I got a big one. So there's a couple things that I could do darning. So here's here's my gloves that I love, which I've darned a zillion times before. Like we got a patch there that's pretty subtle. This big old patch here, this poor little thumb. I actually think I need to probably do another patch here real soon because that's getting pretty weak. I just love them so much and it's been fun to repair. So here's, we got a little hole going. So I was thinking I do have smaller ones in here as well. So like this would slide up in here and then we'd stick a rubber band around this is double thickness which might make this a little bit difficult but we'll see and then i got two smaller ones so these came as like a big uh, as a set so uh, these ones are closer together so that would be like with a finer thread and then these ones are a little bit farther apart like if i wanted to do it with yarn or something which maybe is what i'd use for this I'd probably use the smaller one. So then this would go up here. Ooh, this is pretty fat though. I wonder how well this is gonna work. Ooh, I haven't tried it with the rubber bands yet, but we'll try it tomorrow. I'll probably go like with the grain, like right there. So this would go here. Then we'd make our yarn go across. Oh, this will be interesting. I don't know if this will work. Just because I have that, there's like a fleece lining in here so, to make it extra thick. But I should be able to do it still. So here's, the, so that, there's these. And then the other thing I have that needs darning is <laughs> another one of these sweaters. So <laughs> this is my house coat. If you guys have been here for a while, you guys remember this. So this, this, is, a, this is very much like what I'm wearing now. Uh, but this one my mom actually did knit. And it does have lots of cabling. I have washed this several times though um just because it has been getting bigger and stretched out so i kind of on purpose shrink it up a little bit again this also has been repaired several times like i tried to like crochet in the <laughs> crochet a whole sleeve on here uh it needs some more right here so we could pick up some stitches and knit that but i'd probably just crochet it and then uh, i think the same thing's happening yep we added some crazy <laughs> crochet madness on here too yeah, right there. But uh, these elbows, one in particular. Oh, look, we've we've darned this already. Um, must be this one. Oh yeah. So like right through here, it seems like it's getting a little weak. So I thought maybe we could darn over that. Gosh, and we could probably just use the small one even. So maybe we'll do do this, just kind of darn over this little spot. Oh, I hope these are easy to attach. I'll have to give it a little test before we before we go. So darning would be one way to fix this, but since this is an is not um, an actual hole yet, I could just take yarn like this and kind of knit within. Like it's almost like we're stitching a knit pattern into the knit. So we're basically kind of replacing all these stitches with more yarn. So that would be another way to darn a knit like this when it's not an actual hole. But man, we got some weak spots for sure there. So I'd like to wear, wear this some more too. <laughs> this is nice and warm. Um, so this, this one I'll want to repair as well. And I'm sure there's other stuff around here to darn as well. But I do want to give this a try. I think it's going to be interesting at least <laughs> but that is the little speed weavy guys they're so fun though like a little wave all right you guys so that is that for this evening here's a kind of the size size of of the big one uh 
I'm excited though. I've been looking at those things for ages and just thought they were fun. And uh, they're so expensive though. And this one was um, like they were having a big sale. It was around Christmas, but it took like two months for, for it to get here. So I'm like, you know what? I'm finally gonna, gonna get them. They're cute. So I'd love to give that a try tomorrow. Oh yeah, so I need two rubber bands. Yep, Marsha, so I'll need one uh, to get this on first. And I do have some rubber bands. It came with some rubber bands. I might actually buy some silicone ones. Uh, they're called, if you Google like speed weave, speed weave, um, like speed weave darning, it's gonna come up. So the original ones of these, these are these ones are not vintage, but the speed weave is actually the brand of the vintage ones. Um, so, so you'll see those wooden ones and there's lots of replicas now. Um, and then these ones are also obviously replicas. Uh, but still, if you look speed weave darning, you'll get, you'll get there. You'll get to the things that look, that look like this. But yeah, so it needs a rubber band around here once you stick it in the fabric. And then it also needs, once you just like place this on top, it needs another rubber band that goes around the hook here just so it stays attached to, to the disc. Oh, uh, Sharon says they're really cool. I have lots to mend. <laughs> I know I've been like, I mean, I love mending. I mean, you know, like I've, I've mended these guys a bunch of times, but holy cow, it is deceivingly time intensive. Like just a little, you know, just this little square here that could have taken a couple hours, honestly, which is crazy town. Uh, so the other thing I'll need to do this is a needle, like a nice long needle. So I'll have to grab one of those, but yeah. Uh, I haven't used it yet, so I'm excited to give it a try. So, awesome! So that'll be tomorrow, and like I said, it takes some time, so it might go tomorrow and uh, um, and uh, Thursday, and then Friday I would like to do that tatting. If this does go fast tomorrow and we get this, all, this project done, then we'll do tatting uh, both days, Thursday and Friday, uh, which I'm excited about. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you guys again for joining me. Uh, it's been fun, uh, as always, to hang out with you guys. Thanks again for all your question, questions and just hanging out. And uh, I'll be back here 8.30 p.m. tomorrow for some darning. <laughs> all right. Have a great evening. Good night.